<laughs> yeah. <laughs> All that shit's apple order, let's be clear. All right, hit, hit it. We're going. Oh, great. I'm an innocent man. You're yeah, no, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm playing this saying, again. And I want y'all to know that y'all convicted and had a wrong man in prison. And let me get my music playing. That's Let me be honest with the audience. With and I want y'all to know that. Yeah. I was excited about this. John, I'll be honest with you. I was excited about this. I was eager for this. We set this up expeditiously. Right? And fuck it, man. It's late. We have a nice, honest talk. Have a good time here. How you doing? Doing all right, Mr. Pro. Good. All right, is he good in the mic? Can we hear can we hear him? Because I, I want to so. hear him. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just set the mood in here properly. We have a very, very, very special guest here. And I thought this song was not only appropriate, but beautiful. Shout out to the music lovers out there. Shout out to the Patronis. Shout out to the first and last time listeners. A now and again, we do shit like this. You heard? Some of y'all don't even know what this is right now. I got y'all. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Everybody zone out for a second, man. Oh, man. Sunday morning cleaning. Oh. Hey. Huh? Mic check one, two, one, two. We have a gentleman by the name of John Bunn here with us. Hey. Let me hit the round of applause. Hey. I'm going to go crazy on that amp Amazon thing. Oh. Let me cut this off, man, and get to it. Round of applause. John, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, big bro. Good. You, you look good. You smell good. You were early. Got that shit on. Thanks. This guy was early. <laughs> Just came alone. I appreciate you coming. Mm -hmm. I love when people come alone. Man. I appreciate being here. Differently than probably we would understand. Differently. I got chills playing that little clip. So I can only imagine how you feel listening to it. Yeah. Definitely. No, that's, that's my mom's music. I was raised on that. Mm. No, I, I get mean, a different feeling sitting next to you doing what we doing right now. Like, um, like I'm a humble person, so like, like going through what I was going through. Like you was one of the, you know, one of the rappers that I really, really like liked it. You know what I'm saying? And, mm. and being inside it as a kid, seeing you on pump it up on the TV and all that. That was like one of the biggest hottest shit that was going on at the time. Mm. I was in Sparfit when it was actually going on. So, like, you know, a person be look looking at. You on that too right then, and I'm saying saying next to you now, like that's a big, you know, a gap in my life, like a, a whole 360. That's uh, what's the name of that movie? Interstellarish. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's Interstellarish. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Interstellar. Because it feels like that with me, with you saying it like that. I'm sitting here as a grown ass dude, Lord. and your mm -hmm. recollection as a kid was me as a kid, and. Like, and now we grown. But we're going to get here. So y'all are sitting home saying, who the fuck is John Bunn? <laughs> I got it. Everybody that I told, we had a guest coming. I said, got John Bunn coming. They said, who's John Bunn? When your man came up to me and said, yo, John Bunn want to talk to you. In my head, I said, well, who's John Bunn? Right? But before I get to that, I was only outside that night to see a, a bartender. That's why, was, <laughs> that's why I was outside. I'll be honest with you. You want to hit your drop? You just want to... All right, fine. Uh, why do you I went love to go birds. went to go see a little bar. Uh, oh, my John. God. Mm -hmm. And I got there, and she was there to see you that night. <laughs> 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 that was intriguing to me. Let me just come clean. I like the people watch, right? I like the people watch. I like the profile. Hey, let me see what the fuck is going on here, right? And when I saw that, what I also saw, just being transparent, was you surrounded by like a lot of love? It's a lot of love. Mm -hmm. Abnormal love, right? You don't just see. This was like a visible love. Enough to make me say, well, why the fuck is he so loved, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we spoke. And then me and your people spoke. 
And then I Googled you. And now I'm what's fucked up in the strip club, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> reading reading what I read, because I often hear talk about being able to put yourself in somebody's shoes, right? Like being able to imagine some shit. And some shit I just be having a hard time imagining. So I want to toss to you to walk me through being 14 years old. My, me being 14 years old was different <laughs> mm-hmm. than your story and your experience. So can you walk me through the start of that at 14? Who are you at 14? What are your thoughts? Where's your brain? What are your goals? How's family? What, how is 14-year-old John Bunn before this life-changing incident? 14-year-old John Bunn was a, tr- a troubled kid in the community. Um, my mother Which was- Which community? Well, I was from Brooklyn, Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I grew up in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, New York. Is um and then I actually moved into St. Mark's and Rat- Ralph, which is on a the hill of Ocean Hill, Brownsville. So it's like between Crown Heights and Brownsville, but it's in between Best Eye as well. So it's like right on the hill and was like you know really congested with drugs at the time. Um, my mother at the time was a young mother, three kids, single mother. We all had different fathers. I never met my father. You know what I'm saying? So I had no. Like, no type of male structure in my life that, you know, could really even show me how to be a man. Are you the youngest, oldest of your siblings? I'm the middle. I'm the middle child. Right in the middle. Middle. So, um, I grew up around a bunch of females, um, aunts, cousins, and things like that. And then the crack hit, you know, the crack academic hit, and it hit my household directly. Um, My mother didn't smoke crack, but she she was a fan of alcohol. But, you know, my aunts, my cousins, and all of them started indulging in the crack. So it it went from me having good Christmases as a as a kid from like from you know the early ages from like one to ten and then it went from, you know, no no heat, no light in the crib, you know what I'm saying? To the point where my mom's going every day to work, but my aunts and them turned my motherfucking house into a crack house. You know what I'm saying? So I seen a lot of shit growing up during that time. And it and it made me angry in a lot of different ways where, you know, um, I was developing an anger, but I was too young to really know how to channel that shit, you know? Um, and then growing up around a lot of females at the time, I seen a lot of like males in the community, you know, we had the, like the um, background of being Indians and things like that. Well, my mother, you know, the American Indian thing, like, so we all looked, my mother was really light skinned. We went for Spanish, you know, my mother went for Spanish. So me growing up as a youngin in the community, I could see like, me reflecting on it, it was like, yo, you know, the dudes and the, the the older guys in the community was focused on that family. I was like, that's them Indian bitches or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Part of my French, but that's just the reality of it. So, you know, the men that was coming around was trying to, you know, take advantage or get what they could. And I was a young kid and Justin taking a lot of, absorbing a lot of that shit. And plus then when drugs came into the element, you could just imagine the type of shit that I was exposed to. So... Um, I started wandering outside, you know, um, I was a fan, I was always a fan of basketball, sports, and um, music, the rap was real, I was. I grew up, I was born in, in 76, so that's the whole element of when hip hop was created, yeah. I grew up in it, you know, um, I was like a fan of Lee, like watching B Street was, Lee was like my hero at the time, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> so I wanted to come out and do all the same shit Lee was doing in, in B Street, and um. I was able to, I was, I was a tumbler, so I was flipping and shit. So our big thing was like getting th- dirty mattresses and shit like that, putting them in lots, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And then it got to this th- point where when I was around 14 years old, started stealing cars and shit like that, you know? Um, where were you trying to go? Just stay out late. It was a, it was a shelter just, for us. Um, you know, my mom used to drink and shit like that. And then she started dating a man that wasn't, I wasn't fond of, my little sister father. So he didn't like me. He looked at me like, this little nigga think he tough. I had a chip on his shoulder. But I'm a young dude not understanding that, you know, my my pops ain't around. So another dude coming around just want to lay up on my mom's when some fucking food stamps around. But he ain't never even took me a pimp to a basketball game, buy me no sneakers. Look at this man. What the fuck is this dude walking around the crib with his drawers <laughs> on and shit like that? Six yeah. four dude. So in my mom, I'm a little dude. I'm a little frame, small frame guy now. But my mom, like, 
the shit ain't the environment for me. I'd rather be outside in the street fucking with my friends or a night in a fucking stolen car, whatever the case may be, if that's what I the shelter I had to be in. Mm. So, you know, um, it led to, it, you know, we would start doing little shit too, like robberies, snatching pocketbooks and shit like that to, to have food, buy food. We ain't come from no background. Um, and I got in trouble a couple times and shit like that. But, um, you know, I guess... It puts a stigma on you in the community as oh he's a little ba- he's a bad kid or he's in the wrong crowd and things like that. Yeah. But the reality of the situation is, you know, you you a lost, you dealing with a lot of hurt, a lot of anger. I'm still healing from a lot of that shit. Um and you know, I was just really trying to figure out, you know, you know, find my way, like, you know, figure figure this life shit out without with no with no guidance, really. You know what I'm saying? Like my mother felt like just because she was going to work. Come home every week, you know, Friday, buys a pair of sneakers or so, fuck it, she going to party. You know what I'm saying? She wanted to live her life. She's 26 years old at the time. And then when I really reflect on it, the whole analyzing the picture of it, I'm saying to myself, then I'm, I'm her second child. The second my pops got killed, the first, my my brother father nowhere around. I, he was known to be dead at the time from when we was first growing up. I learned that he was alive like when I was 10 years old or some shit. But... My my pop's dad, and then she on her third child pregnant again. This nigga's a piece of shit. She was in, you know, she was dysfunctional and she was depressed. So her drinking alcohol and shit like that, I could I could relate to or empathize with it from this perspective of my life. But at that time, it just made me angry, you know. Yeah. And then I couldn't read, so you know, um, I guess it was an easy, easy target for like, you know, the, the police in my community because I was vulnerable. I was out there, you know what I'm saying? And then I and then I'm poor. Were the cops familiar with you at that point? Um, yes, they were. I believe so. Um, it, you know, um, you know how your name travel in the community. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't actually getting arrested for like real crimes and no shit like that. But um, the Scar Seller was really popular. I used to call him Batman and Robin in my community back then. So... Um, they knew who was who, what was what, you know what I'm saying? And I think, like, I was just an easy pick, you know, at that time. And then, you know, I did have a reputation somewhat to say, but not no shit, no murder, you know? So the night where you're outside, were you going anywhere in particular, or were you just out roaming when they nabbed you? No, this, I, I wasn't outside the night that this happened. When they got you, when they arrested you? No, I was in my house. They came and got me. Well, this crime was committed. Yeah. Two or three days prior to them arresting me. When they came and got me, I was in my household. They came and got me at my mother's breakfast table. Shut up. Actually, my basketball coach came and got me. He was I was playing basketball for PAL. I was like the starting point guard for PAL of seventy seven precinct. Anybody in my community could tell you I was I was like, you know, I was popular in my community. So I don't know how I went down to my basketball coach um being the one that actually led the 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 gang of police into my house that morning, but he told my mother later that he just brought them because he didn't want them to kill me or whatever, some shit like that. But um, that's how I went down. Um, my name must have got mentioned, or they said a random call later on um, came through, and um, they brought me down to the precinct under pretext. So they came and got you out your mom's house. Mm-hmm. How many of them? 25, 30. Whoa. How old were you? 14. You was 14 when you got locked up? Mm-hmm. They, so it, they used a pretext. So in, in, the legal, in the legal terms, the pretext is what they actually did was they said I was involved in a, 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 a robbery, a fight, mm-hmm. um, to get me out of my mother's jurisdiction. Once they got me outside of my mother's, dic- my mother's jurisdiction, they started questioning me about a uh, homicide. Mm-hmm. And um, they started questioning me about like my code defense. Without a guardian present. Yes, without guardian present, without Attorney. a lawyer present, and I'm illiterate. I can't read. And you can't read. So um, they started questioning me. They wanted me to um, give them information about my co-defendant at the time, Rashawn Hargrove. They wanted to know if I ever seen him with a gun. Mostly, all the questions they was asking me was basically about him. Um, there was no env- em- there was no information for me to give him about the crime, about him. He just was someone that I knew from my community. Oh, mm-hmm. the guy got a reputation. Like um, so, it was. It put me in a position where they got me down to the precinct, and um, it was like they tried to make me make a video statement 
Um, so after they start questioning me about like, and that's five, not six illegal, hours, huh? And that's not illegal. Um, I'm pretty sure the whole the pretext within itself is illegal because what they did was they said that I was mentioned in a robbery, right? So once they got me down to the precincts under the robbery, they start questioning me about the homicide. They never really had the rights to arrest me for the robbery because from my understanding of what the fact of the law is, is that the judge never signed off on a, on a whatever paper. So that, that whole shit was forced. It was just something that they made up in the precinct to get me get down to the precinct. Once they got me down to the precinct for the robbery, they put me in a lineup for a homicide. Once I... Mm. So... um. Mm. The main thing was, you know, um, when it, when a crime first happened, they was looking for an individual that was in his late twenties, five nine, built things like that. Um, evidently, I was fourteen years old, five two, maybe ninety pounds, soaking wet. You know what I'm saying? I was a little kid. Um, by the time my mother got down to the precinct, she was already intoxicated. So it was like it was no. Her, when she came in there, her thing was, just tell them what they want. It, it, she was already in that mist, mind state. She wasn't getting what was going on. And the police should be turned up because these are cops that died. Um, what you say? Or sheriff. The crime that was committed. The police that have you, mm -hmm. they should be turned up because these were cops that were... They were here. correctional officers. Correctional officers. Right. Oh, that's who got... Yeah, they were correctional officers. Yeah. Oh. They I mean, actually lived in the community. Oh... Mm. Um. They lived in the community. So they trying to solve. So anybody going, somebody, somebody going, yeah, going, somebody going, down somebody going where? Right away. Yeah. They actually lived in the community when it happened. Um, one of the correctional officers was the one who testified against me. Um, he actually went to school with my co-defendant's family and things like that. Um, years later, when I got released, I heard he came around the community looking for me. Like, yo, where's Wayne? Huh? Um, it was a lot of different times it was supposed to be said that he was going to come and say the right shit, but that never happened. Um, mm. And me being naive to law, I really didn't understand what was going on at the time. I thought that me being innocent, that it was going to work out. Like, the shit was going, I'm innocent. So all I got to do is really be innocent in this shit, in my mind. Like, mm -hmm. And I don't, I, don't, I don't really know about law or none of that shit. And then I'm, you know, I got this chip on my shoulder going through this shit. So I'm thinking like, I got to be a tough character going through this shit because I'm in a tough position. You know what I'm saying? Um, only only way I've been how to dealt with um, struggle with it was like with, with, with anger. You know what I mean? Um, put up an angry facade. Um, being in school when it, when it was time for me to come, you know, to read and shit like that, it would fuck me up. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I would do lash out shit to get out of class and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole reading thing was a real barrier for me. That's why, like, I emphasize on the, on the whole literacy thing. Because mm -hmm. going through this process of me going back and forth to court, like, for the first six months, I slept in a glass motherfucking room, big bro. Like, with the lights on all night, they, they try to, like, fuck up my mind. You know what I'm saying? So, it was all, like... This shit was a mental warfare for me more than anything else. Due to the fact that I was a kid, they really couldn't beat me like that because it was going to be highlighted. You understand what I'm saying? So my co-defendant was older. He was on Rocky Island. So he experienced a lot of the physical shit. With me, it was more mental warfare because they knew I didn't do this shit from the beginning. Now, after I was in there for like a couple months, um, they came, I thought I was in it like 90 days. And it's like, yo, man, um, and he's like, yo, man, um, some palm prints that came up because it was a, it was a bikes that was involved. I don't need no tissue. I'm good. Nigga, um, I need a fucking tissue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it was some bikes involved, and um, they came to me, and um, they was like, yo, you know, um, if if your palm prints clear, you know, you you out of here, and shit like that, and um. That came and went. Um, one of my most, one of my most things that, I, like I feared about in the in the beginning stages, was, like, like that just never coming home. Like I felt like I was going to die in prison. Like that's all they were throwing your mind. So back when this shit first happened to me, you know, um, the death penalty and all that shit was real. Like it's not. It wasn't. It was like real part of my. You know what I'm saying. So. 
I ain't know if they gonna try to kill me for this shit or not. And you being in that mind state, you don't, you know. Um, mommy and them can't help you in, under them under them circumstances. You know what I'm saying? Um, everything is really distant, and um, you become a focal point where it's like you got a big target on your back. You know what I'm saying? So when I, you know, my first 16 months in Sparfit. It was a counselor that was there by the name of Johnson. They used to call him Robocop. He was really big, dude, like around 6'4", 200 chains. Anybody that was there know him. Um, I guess the guy that got killed in my crime was his friend. And um, he made it his business, you know, to try to make my life hell. Um, he physically beat me up in the, in the beginning, but they, they, that's when they, after that, they separated me from population. And they put me under suicide watch for the first six months. So instead of them basically um, suspending him or, you know, chastising him for what he did to me, they put me under suicide watch, saying that I was in danger of me killing myself when I never threatened to kill myself, no shit like that. So they put me under suicide watch for the first six months, and um, I basically I slept in the glass room um, with the lights on 24 hours. They went and turned that shit off. Um, so after my mom's and them, like, got me a different lawyer from complaining. The entire time? Yeah, they wouldn't turn the lights off. For the first six months, I was like 14. Um, so the only way for me to get darkness was, like, I got to put the cover on my head. You know what I'm saying? Like, I sleep. I, if I'm in, I keep the cover on my head. That's you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, after my first six months, um, and going through that process, they decided to let me back in population. Um, they put me in back in population, but they put me with like like the older guys. Like, you know what I'm saying? They ain't put so back then in Sparfit, it was all about like putting people with your age category, your size mm -hmm. category, things like that. So due to the fact, you know, the nature of my arrest and everything, they put me with the older guys, the more aggressive guys, um, thinking that it was gonna cause uh a dual effect, like it was going to cause an effect, where like guys going to be taking advantage of me and shit like that. But um, I ain't never been no sucker or none of that shit. Like for me growing up and nothing like that, I wasn't soft or nothing, or nothing like that. So it turned out different. Like the older niggas that was there, they start looking at like, damn, shorty, what up? Like trying to school me, give me, and like take to me, like damn, shorty ain't no pussy. You know? Like they related more so than because they was really going through whatever they was going through. You know what I'm saying? So like the more guys that was like. You know, really had shit, you know what I'm saying? On, on lockdown, I, I shout them out if I could, bro. Um, Mo Blind, that's my brother. My man Crime, my man G Black. Like, these was guys that was already established when I got there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Already going through what they going through. And um, they kind of, like, Hold paved the way. You know what I'm saying? Held me down. And go against the motherfucking staff for me if they want. Because the staff was really trying to, like, run down on me. You know what I'm saying? And these dudes was like wasn't going for that shit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so I got through that process. But it got to a point where I didn't even want to go to court no more, or none of that shit. I just wanted to get the case over. I wanted to go to trial. I thought by me making making it to trial, I was going to get my day. You know, I was going to have my day in court, as they say. And that's really was what it turned out to be. It was my day in court because after the first sixteen months of going back and forth to court, like waiting for my day in trial, as they say. um... With a case of my magnitude, they um, prosecuted, convicted me all in one day. Like, my trial was a one-day trial. There's no other... You can't you can look all over the law books you want. You can't find another case like the John Bond with Sean Hargrave. One-day trial conviction. It's like it's like unheard of. The trial, the deliberation, you, you, everything in one day. Everything in one day. How do you do that? That's what the judge said when she just <sighs> basically Why? had to review love, our case. Like how the, how the, how how did how did this even happen? When they when we got back in court of recent times, just them doing certain investigations, it took them. You understand what I'm saying? As it would. <laughs> um, here and after, here and after, here and after. How could they present all of that in a day? How long is how long is the that judge long told the jury? Um, it was like a two couple days before Thanksgiving. She told the jury, um, if y'all gonna come back with a um a decision before the end of the day. I'm going to hold all of y'all in chambers through the holiday. 
you gotta think about it. They they playing dirty off the rip because they feel it's one of theirs mm -hmm. that would kill. No, but not so the jurors. Now they not railroad, the jurors. They, not only that, whatever, the no, judge, everybody. The 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 lawyer that I was assigned to was an 18B lawyer, um, for no cut. He was diagnosed with the beginning stages of dementia when they sent me to trial. Some representing. Me. I didn't find that out until recently when I got back in court with. My co-defendant, defendant attorney, who said that this was, he said, I went to trial with a lawyer from the beginning stage of dementia. He wasn't fit to represent anyone, not any, not a person of uh, this, like, so mm. I was sitting there with a fucking trick. I was in a, I was in a fixed fight. Yeah, that, yeah. My whole life, I'm thinking exactly. I can really fight myself out this mm -hmm. shit, and I can't even fight myself out this shit. All my life, I've been trying to fight for some shit that they I wasn't with. There was no way out. You know, they they put me in some shit that was no way out. You know, um, by the grace of you know, I don't want to say by the grace of God, but I was in the right place at the right time to stop a a, a, a real evil person from doing some wicked shit. And um, that's what led to me being paroled. Um, a dude tried to rape a staff. In 2005, when I was in Elmira Correctional Facility, I was actually facilitating um, ART at the time, um, and I intervened. I stopped him. You know what I mean? Um, got into a physical altercation. When he actually assaulted her, had crushed her windpipe, try to try to. He had her pants around her ankles and everything. When I was able to, when I when I came into the room, I stopped the shit, and the police and them froze up. My man, I was up there with me. He backed me up. Um, they try to sweep that shit under the rug. They was gonna send us to all these special condition jails. And I was like, nah, we ain't going for none of that shit. Like, you know, um, for what? Cause I felt like what we did was honorable. It was a lot of in, it was a lot of prisoners who didn't like that shit. You know what I'm saying? But me with my ego, my my pride, I'm like, I'm not going to no custody type situation because I'm a lifer at this time. You know and I'm saying I'm still look at this time I'm big. And I'm not I, I don't forgot about me even mm -hmm. the hopes of me coming home. I'm 17 years in on my shit. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm at least do 25 years before they give me a shot because that's a life term for a juvenile. So I already done raised the thought of me going home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, when that when that incident took place, that woman came back eight months later after she held up and told me she's not leaving docs until, she, until I get let go. When I went to parole, lady ain't had none of that shit on foul, ain't handled. Counselors ain't right now. She was like, what? She went and fought for me to get released. Mm. I'm shocked they didn't try to suppress her. Mm-hmm. Mm right? Yeah. I'm just saying, like, she she works for them. It's like a liability, like, for them to write it down. So for her to come back that strongly and adamant and it work, like, salute to her. For real, she's one of my angels. It, it always be certain angels that connect the dots for me, and I, and I definitely I would want to say her name, but I wouldn't want to expose her identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, if she ever watches, I always try to put it out there. Like, thank you. Like she said, she saved me. You know, um, her and Francis Robles from the New York Times. Um, thank you too. You saved me. I love you. Um, these are people that you know came back for a lost soul. Like they ain't had to do none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I just be grateful I'm in a position where um, I could spread light on sh things that could still go on with, in the system. Um, what happened to me happened to other individuals right now. Um, where we come from is always a, a, a tough persona. Like, so dudes don't want to act like or people don't want to act like um, this shit shatters your soul yo I'm fucked up as an individual you know what I'm saying so it take like all everything I go through is a healing process you know what I'm saying I get into a certain position and people think you know even if you get rewarded bread like in a position where I'm at now like even having some bread that shit don't make you nothing but a more of a target you can't figure mm -hmm. a lot of more shit out you know, the females that come into your life, the mm -hmm. family members, mm -hmm. all that shit is a sense of entitlement. And I sit in the box, but they won't motherfucking feed me, man. You know what I'm saying? They beat me till I had to piss blood in that shit. You understand what I'm saying? You know, ain't nobody can help nobody up in that motherfucker. I seen the toughest dudes crawl from mommy in that motherfucker. Ain't no help. When they want to hurt you, they going to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? So all that shit is was a sod, you know? And then I also saying that because, like... 
the facade of prison is some corny shit. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole where you tough, you are, are, all these muscles and shit. Yo, we get stripped whenever these people want to come run down on us. The toughest motherfucker going to twig their toes and spread their ass cheeks, go all through their mouth. Yes, sir, all that. But we come out here is look at the next man. We fuck with the nigga, all that. All that, all that shit corny, man. You up in that shit, you wasting your life. You dying, slow death. You know what I'm saying? Only motherfuckers that's in it, they is ignorant. All that shit, they, they you applaud ignorant shit. And I was amongst that element at one time. Like, just to me, for to be respected, I, I started subjecting myself to animalism mentality. And that shit is wicked, man. And, and, and you know, it's, it's I go back now, going back to Ragged Sound and speaking to the kids. Um... I look at them as kids. They're young men. You know, um, you know, 21 and older and all that. Um, everything right now is based on the game um, philosophy or whatever the case yeah. may be. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are in there. They don't even understand the charges that they be in charge with. And I can identify with that because I was going through that same type of shit. And when I first got locked up, individuals ain't know me. So they start calling me CO. Like, they put that stigma on me. Yo, CO, like, I, so I went and really answer nobody because I ain't know who was who. And that put, put so much of a bulge on my back, I started letting people really call me that shit because I ain't know no better. Yo, CO, I, 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 boom, boom, boom. Now, I'm in there for some shit I didn't do at all. I didn't know nothing mm -hmm. about, I had no knowledge of. At the certain account, uh, at a certain point, you being accepted by other motherfuckers, you letting people put a label on you. To where you will wear that label just for a motherfucker putting a label on you because this is what I'm accepted by. This is what people embracing me by in a in a in a toxic fucked up environment. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean I know y'all done heard the stories, but I'm I'm, I'm I people just putting shit in their mouth or throwing shit on each other, or pissing shit. You know, all that shit is animalistic mentality. You know and. It's applauded like this shit is normal or oh, this tough. I've been through this. Man, that shit don't make you tough or none of that shit. You wasting your life up in the up in the element. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of the individuals I was forced to be around, I don't be wanting to associate myself with them. Not cause I'm afraid of you to fuck with. We not the same. I was forced to be in the motherfucking element right now. We don't got the same philosophies. I don't. I, I don't want to keep on reliving talking about me. Spending the yard and all that. I don't give a fuck about how tough you was, how many people you cut, how many people you stabbed. You can't put none of that shit on no resume. This is real life here. You know what I'm saying? You still, they, you still, people want to put merit to some shit that has no validity in real life. You know, then when you come out here, you can't get right as a real man. Non existent virtues. Let me ask you. <clears throat> Based on what you just said, you think that's why so many niggas go back to jail? Because they can't they find, can't survive out here. They can't find no, I'm going through that with individuals that's around me right now. And it come to a point where, like, people calling me, asking me for this, this, and that. Now, I done gave people thousands and thousands of dollars, offer people jobs to do certain shit. When I started collecting books and giving them shits out, ain't nobody want to come help me with none of that shit. They, with them, it was no money involved into none of that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was just me pushing on purpose. Pushing for purpose. Mm -hmm. It actually put me in a place where I started opening my mind and keep me keep motherfuckers away from me. You know what I'm saying? When I started doing some shit, the ah, da, 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 but let me say, let's go out to the strip club. I get a million motherfuckers come around me, help mm -hmm. me throw some singles. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when it when it when it was time for me to push them books, they wasn't that was a whole nother element. And um back to your question, I was just saying that. Like, even giving people money, some people, some even with but some people money can't help them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the only place they could feel comfortable is where they could be that tough persona where that shit has oh, some you know. type of marriage. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to say? So in, in prison, you could be wherever you go, your name ring bells, you this, you this, and this. But when you come back into society, you ain't nobody. Like you basically got to start in real life from scratch and really like put some credentials behind mm -hmm. your name. Motherfucker don't even got a license nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know... You could go to prison to prison, a person will send you a package. They could live under that, and, and it's, it's no pressure. You're the Jeff Bezos of the judge. Not, even if Bill you're not Gates running shit, even if you Bill Gates or not, it's just no pressure to deal with real life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I had to tell my man, you, you moving around, you doing all this shit, acting like you don't care, you doing this shit for your daughter. You just did a stretch, right? You go back up in there. She 12 right now, 4, 13, 12. 
You go do another five years. When you come back, somebody gonna be fucking on her, nigga. If you really love her, mm-hmm. you ain't got no time for another bed, nigga. So for you to be acting like you don't give a fuck out, nah, I don't wanna hear you love your daughter, you need some bread. You don't need no bread, you need help from me, nigga, if you moving like that because you putting yourself in a position where you gonna be letting somebody motherfucking do whatever they want to. And then, so for you running around, like you gonna do this, do that, do that, all that shit is clown shit. Because in the real life mentality of it, you just put yourself in a position where you're going to make her vulnerable. You can't protect her. You, and, 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 you, and you just can't get right. Motherfuckers start can't a harsh, get right. That's such a harsh honesty, but we say all the time, that's why you need certain niggas around in the do. ecosystem to give that. Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. But if, you, but if all your associates put value in who could beat who, who shot who, who got the most money back in the 80s, that's niggas worship that shit. Me and Corey know niggas that mm-hmm. that's they whole claim to fame. Nigga, back in ninety nine, yeah. that nigga I had the motherfucking eight fifty with the BBs. Or, that was they claim to fame. In today's society, no disrespect to nobody. These some of these same niggas, dog. They they been in jail for long stretches. They don't have no formal education. They driving a forklift somewhere, making fifteen dollars an hour, seventeen dollars an hour. In real life society, you are nothing to the mm-hmm. people. Right. The, mm-hmm. the powers that be. Mm-hmm. I'm not disrespecting nobody. Some of these people are dear friends of mine. Like, yo, but in the world, you nobody. In this old school 80 streets or when you go back to jail, you got some stain in jail. Niggas looking at you because your hand game right and you can shoot your... You know what I'm saying? Dog, but out here, what he's saying, these white people don't give a fuck about you and society don't give a fuck about you. You another ignorant nigga. So some niggas do feel more comfortable in the projects. You give a nigga a million dollars, they stay in the projects, bro. Mm. They scared of society. I seen that too. They scared of society. Mm. Niggas can't function out here. I've seen it too, actually. Yeah, niggas can't function out here. They scared to death to be going to boardroom. Well, sometimes all, all you know is what you know, right? True. Like I talk about uh, my man all the time. They hit the lotto. 300 M's. He here. He didn't go nowhere. I'm 60. I'm 70 years old. This is what I know for my whole life. Mm. Like, where, where you want me to go? You want me to go learn something else? I'm That's here. Crazy. That's scary. Yo, let me ask you. You said you gave people mad money. They ain't do nothing with it, right? Mm-mm. Ask for more. That's it. Yeah. I gave an individual... I don't want to say that amount, because that shit going to open up a can of worms. Right. But I put people in a position that's like unimaginable. No one ever gave me more than $500 in my life at one time. Never. I'm just being honest with you. I don't. I can't recall somebody even giving me that amount at one time, giving me that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um. So, like, I done gave people, like, thousands and thousands of dollars to put people in position to feel like, you know, let me see, you know, not even let me see. There's hoping, like, you could go forward from this position. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be. And you, the, some of the next questions was like, all right, so how much more can I get? Right. And I'm talking about significant amounts, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, significant yeah. amounts. Give a nigga you, a fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Give a nigga a fish. Over 20,000, let's just say. They're going to come back and for more it's fish. just like, you know. Um, I get it. I get it. Trust 100%. me, I get you, it. No, they, you know, they say you give a nigga a fish, they're going to come back for more yeah, fish. You got to teach him how to fish mm-hmm. so he can make his own money. You know what I'm saying? And most people won't. I mean, at at this point in life, I feel like we lead by example. So um, when you, you can't say teach a grown man how to fish. Like, you know what I'm saying? He got a motherfucker know how to swim at that point. Like, this is, we, we, if you say you in the trenches and you could stay on the blocks and you a street nigga, there's no reason for you to keep asking another person for certain shit. And you keep ending up with the same results. Cause that shit ain't working for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um up. at some at some point. And then you got guys that do twenty five years and come home and get a sanitation job and build their credentials and start working themselves up and get a car and be good whatever position they in, even if it's working class. True, true, true. But they ain't gotta ask nobody for shit. Mm-hmm. They ain't gotta mm-hmm. go through the searches mm-hmm. of they ain't got to go through the process of somebody telling them, come, yo, shake, I'm shaking you down, spray. Let me see your ass, between your asshole, cough, twiggy your toes. They ain't got to go through that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I respect the person. I got friends like that right now that just came home. And them is guys that I'm willing to help. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, like I got a friend named like Tone. Tone been home two years right now, the 25 years. You know what I'm saying? He pieces together. He, he, he got so much pride, he, he try not to ask nobody for shit. You know what I'm saying? He'll try to figure it out. But well, until you see the point, you'll be like, nah, man, ain't that serious. Let me help you mm-hmm. out with this part. You know what I'm saying? Right, and it right. feel good for for me to help a person like that because I know he ain't no sucker. 
or no none of no none of that shit. Mm-hmm. He he got around sixty five years. He lucky to be here right now. He ain't nigga that a bust his gun and won't give a fuck. Ain't about no bread. He all about a person disrespecting him, his manhood and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, um, you know, I don't. I want to hear more about that. What type of readjustment is that when you go in at fourteen and come out? How old was you when you came on? I was thirty one. The was world 31. has changed. Everything has changed. Um, You've changed. What happened with me? Um, to be totally honest with you, um, I crashed um, coming home um, after that time because I wasn't. I didn't prepare myself to be back out here at, when they let me go. Um, when that incident happened and then she came back, um, I got a letter in the mail saying like the parole board couldn't make a decision on me. And then like three weeks later after that, I got a letter on like a Wednesday saying, yo, we releasing you Friday. And that was like the biggest shit to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, my mom was blowing. Um, I came home to my mother living in the same apartment and the same furniture, hand me down wow. furniture, I left. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Nothing had changed. My man gave me $300 and I had a pair of Timberlands on. Now I'm 17 years Now it's even more of a different pressure. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, no, nah, that's that's, that's insane, crazy. Yeah. That's more interstellar shit. Nah, fam. That's ridiculous. Think about that. Yeah. It's dramatic to think about. It's like life was on pause, sort of. You know what I mean? No. Like, not, be on right pause. Back, not right back to this right. as an adult. My whole brain thinking different now. I can read now, nigga. Like, nah. nah. But there's a lot of <laughs> niggas on the hamster wheel in real life, bro. They not going nowhere. They running on the hamster wheel. Not and then the thing about it is that, you know, I'm I'm 17 years in my bed at that time. I got my shit together, so to say, in jail. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm bedding. I'm my cell laced mm-hmm. out. <laughs> I got you can't even see the wall and that shit. I'm living like that shit is a way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got right. boom, boom. I got my program. I got niggas bringing me weed. Mm-hmm. It's, it's my shit laid out. Then I'm coming home back to nothing. Right. $300. You know what I'm saying? And like, damn, why, what I do now? And I'm a life parolee, you know what I'm saying? Ain't like I come home, I got a clear name, a clear star. I'm coming home on parole, life parole as a murderer. You know what I'm saying? Second uh, degree murder. So I can't get a they job. They can see that right. stuff, right? Mm. Everything yeah. was they there. They can see that stuff mm-hmm. if I go on a job interview. Uh, Everything. They get, listen, until I got exonerated, I was still known as a murderer. I never had a legitimate job in my life, bro. If it wasn't for like my friends and them having liquor been and me working with this person, even, y'all know even some of the individuals that helped gave me face. One of, um, um, Bimmy brother Joe from from premise, sure. yeah. Joe, one of the individuals who helped me get in tune because he was in tune with someone else that I know. He had the liquor thing going on. Mm-hmm. Him being familiar with where I'm coming from, my history, us knowing a lot of same people from the street. He helped me get an opportunity. But if it wasn't for individuals like that was street bound, that was trying to give me opportunities, I ain't had. I couldn't go the other way, and then I was running into different opportunities. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Damn. Negative opportunity. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because you got to think about it. A person like myself go to prison for a crime. Nobody know I ain't had nothing to do with. Ain't nobody else get jammed for the shit. Ain't nobody go to jail for it. I sunk it up. Even when, you know what I'm saying? So now you got a certain kind of stamp on you. A fish you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, the real nigga shit. Whatever, that's, whatever that is. Even so, then, it's like a stamp that you didn't ask for and you might not even want. Right. <laughs> Coming, coming home. But, you but, live, but if you, that's all you got, got if that's, that's all you got, you got to lean on that. Got to work with what you got. You got to yeah. lean on it because that's the only beneficial thing that you got, you got is your name at that point. That's it's, all you got. And so, I just told this girl yesterday that that um, I said, yo, you know, for a large percent of my life, you know, only thing I had was my name. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, when people really say that shit, like, yo, you always got my word, my butter, my... Like, all I really had was my name. So I was willing to live and die for that shit because I ain't feel like, you know... I done studied, you know, like, after me being totally honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Um, Like, me being in the position I'm in now, right, and I see how people handle it, it, it throws me off because I done been in a position where, like, you know, I done been around the guy that was the man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Before. And I always, like, you know, was willing to go above and beyond, like, to just, you know, show that I don't want nothing for free. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I want to earn my own keep. You know what I'm saying? One of my good friends that 
of today is Jamal Tinsley. You know what I'm saying? The basketball player. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he met me, you know, if you, I don't know where you, but like, Mel loved me. You know what I'm saying? And we, we grew a friendship out of him meeting me out of nowhere. And then just learning my story afterwards, before any of the new shit, any of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for um, me working with Tinsley or me basically like him taking me under his wing for a large percentage. Of time of me trying to get my shit in order, I would have been back yeah. in jail, jammed up because I ain't have I ain't have no resources. Right. You know, um, I did a violation. I did a violation. Mel was checking on me. Yo, what's going on? Wayne? What's going? Like my spirit was always good around me. I ain't never. As soon as I got away from him, niggas stealing his jury, shit like that, all type of clown shit. The people that was around. So you know that's why mm-hmm. you know. But you say who you got around you. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't family or certain things, you got to be mindful of that. So I was I was blessed to be around someone like Tinsley to basically basically be able to see certain things before I was in position to like mm-hmm. really be able chills. to do certain myself. You give me chills now. Yeah. You showing a lo- you showing up alone has a whole different context to me now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. No, honestly. No. Nah. But you, you saying being around Jamal and he had a couple dollars, so now when you got your money, it allowed you to see how to maneuver a little bit. Um, it, it allowed me to see how to move a lot, and it also um a lot of things, a lot of moves, and a lot of things he would tell me back then. It makes sense to me now. Um, and that's the living experience within itself for me, really being involved. Like I've really seen that. Soon as I left, motherfuckers start stealing. Mm. It ain't <laughs> straight up and down. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't have did that. You know why? Because I like nothing now I was willing to kill yeah, for that yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, right. Like real talk because ain't nobody never want to show me the world no shit like that. I stood in front of guns for niggas, my nigga. I've been willing to die because I ain't know no better. And niggas know me. I ain't, ne- I ain't never, I ain't never, man. But a motherfucker that ain't, I ain't had to do that for this boy when seeing how hard was, willing to show me life. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I don't, and I, and I've been willing to die for another motherfucker on the honor because I feel like that's, that's the best, that's the only shit I got. You know, overriding over motherfuckers that we looking up to growing up, thinking that, yo, man, mm. this motherfucker don't give a fuck about you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to tell you that motherfucker don't give a fuck about you. They only motherfucking use you as far as they could throw you. You know what I'm saying? When you ain't here no more, you a story after a motherfucking week or month. Bitch gonna fuck another nigga. They gonna get some money somewhere else play. I've been the broke nigga most of all my life. I'm the broke nigga, the one that's willing to play in the work, do all the extra shit, because I ain't got it. But God always connect the dots with me. I ain't got to ask a motherfucker for nothing. Straight up and down. And I'm willing to die for mine, motherfucker. Real shit. Man, I just be trying to stay focused, do the right shit. And that's why I push out positivity and I push out positive. Because I know, like, the other shit is corny, man. And we put, we pushing out energy that's being adopted by these kids. And they fucking up their whole world. They don't really got no hope. You know what I'm saying? These kids is... They ain't got no hope, man. A lot of them come from the same resources I come from. Fucked up, mm-hmm. no no pops around, mm-hmm. moms even on drugs, alcohol, shit like that. You can't read, ain't no real bread around. You know what I'm saying? People coming around ain't got no good intentions for you. That's so the, you angry. That's the other thing. Like Going to jail is one thing, especially for the amount of time. But not being able to read or write how, do, how am I communicating? How am I how am I getting the and now I gotta learn this. And mm-hmm. like, it took me a couple years to work my mom my first letter. That letter I felt changed our relationship. You know what I'm saying? It changed. I put everything I felt in that shit. You know what I'm saying? I put everything I felt in that. How old are you at this point now when you write this letter? Sixteen. That's sixteen years of shit I needed to say. Mm-hmm. 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 I can imagine that being, yeah. How long did it take you to, to learn? To learn? Well, two years. Two years. But how tough was that? It was a process, man. Like, I didn't even write the letter by my, I had the guys would read it for me, you know? Um, by the time I was 17, um, I was able to get my GED. Um, nice. Hard. Shout out to Raymond Santana, when of Exonerated Five. Um, mm-hmm. He was actually one of my tutors when I got up top. Wow. He mm-hmm. was another person that took to me. It was like certain dots in my life, they connect for whatever they connect for. Mm-hmm. I ain't really understand it. And the shit always seemed magical to me. 
I ain't gonna lie. Like I always felt like I was gonna get to certain levels in life. Mm-hmm. And when I walk through shit right now and I'm doing certain things, like the biggest shit I ever did was speak at a college commencement. Mm-hmm. I never I never made it to high school. Mm-hmm. I never went into high school, bro. I never went to change class and I don't mm-hmm. know what that shit feel like. I used to sit in my cell and dream about that shit. Like, damn, what is it even like to have a high school girlfriend? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what is it like to feel like go through them type of in, in, them feelings? I'm in a situation where I, I was sent to state prison when I was 17, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm going into an environment where I got rap off. Motherfucker going to try to rape me, still kill me, straight up and down. So I got to be extra aggressive. My mind going into different mind state at that time. I'm willing to kill. By any means necessary for me to survive, survival. I'm going to do whatever I got to do under these. And it ain't even about me being the toughest nigga. This is survival right here. Oh, survival. This predator of prey. This ain't no, you got to be tough. You got to, this is what's going to happen. If you ain't stand up for nothing, your mother better not come to visit because the nigga going to be telling you, nigga, bring, get your mom bring me some drugs. Send me a package. If you ain't bringing no drugs, uh, send, send a package. Ain't, this ain't, ain't nothing nice about none of that shit. Nigga smile at you and... Stab you on your motherfucking back for real, like that's for real. You no, know, every every friendship got, you know, what I'm saying some type of um motivation to it. None, none is you gotta watch everything yeah. with everybody. If y'all ain't been been for years and you know person, like it was di- it was different for me because I literally grew up in prison. Mm. So you know, I grew up in prison. So I seen dudes come back, 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 back to later on in life. They older now, they third, fourth bed. Then they gang bang a whole different individual. I seen a lot of that shit. And then I was in prison when the whole gang thing transitioned to New York. Cause the gangs wasn't in prison oh, when I first that, that, that shit wasn't Yeah, he my age. Yeah, that, that was a wasn't. that was a whole nother thing. Yeah. I seen the transition, how all the dudes, the whole me going from the youngsters, like from being in Sparfit going through that and then going yeah, to Dells and then seeing dudes come back in that time when I went to I, I got transferred to um Maximum State Prison in 95. So that's when, like, the gang shit really hit. All the blood shit hit. Blood shit. Mm. It was, go, like, mm. going through the state, 95, all through, you know what I'm saying? And I seen the transition. So, you know, that's that was another, you know... Pressure. Pressure and, like, you know... um I never adapted to the gang thing, you know what I'm saying? So it was I I had, I had a lot of issues with that. Like I, I had a lot of beef with the with the with the gang thing. Um, my my man Mac Murder, um, we call him um, Mac Murder, but he's still locked up. His real name is Mac Moten. He started something called um, Death Before Dishonor or something, but it wasn't even no gang shit. It was just some shit. I, I'm going against this shit because I don't want to stand for this so it was like mm-hmm. if you a person you know that was like a saying back in the days mm-hmm. death before the sauna mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be so due to the fact that we all came from DFY you know what I'm saying anybody that we or we we grew up together so anybody that came from DFY that was associated with Mac when he got on his bullshit and he had went at some of the bloods they started to beef all the DFY guys was just looked at like they was associated with that because we all was friends we all grew up together and they, mm-hmm. like that and um we wasn't willing to trade our friendship over no bloodshed because we didn't even believe in the gang shit because that ain't how we grew up. You understand right. what I'm saying? We looking at these guys that was with us a couple years ago, not no not gang no shit even around. Yeah. We back at, now it's a couple years later. It's like you went elementary school, junior high school, then you make it to high school and now these niggas is the gang. Mm-hmm. It's the same shit. Old it ain't, switch, yeah, like, it's the, you know what I'm saying? That? It's just that every time I graduated, I went to a higher level of prison. I wasn't going to school. You know? I just I went from like that. You know? So, yeah, what we the same age. Damn, I'm 46, you're 45. Damn, you putting that out there. <laughs> nah, that's all <laughs> part of me, Playboy. You look good, man. Thank you, bro. Oh, nah, like even in our neighborhood and Corey from my hood, so they, they was putting pressure. Young niggas was putting pressure on the old head niggas to to bring them home and to make them convert and all of that shit in our hood I don't know how I was in jail I think in jail too I was hearing the stories that the young niggas was putting pressure on niggas to become blood you gotta get down or you was getting your ass beat you was getting poked you was getting whatever um, it wasn't like that well when I went to Green Correctional Facility in 95 I was there for about 60 days before they sent me to Kaksaki that was my the most racial situation environment I ever experienced. Anybody that was there back in 95 would tell you that. Green or Kaksaki? Green. Green. And that was a medium. 
But the Spanish yeah. guys in green wouldn't let a black soul live in that motherfucker. Every if you came there from Ragged Island, you was considered blood. You couldn't you wouldn't live twenty four hours. Factual. You wouldn't make it to a child, they would say. By that child run, motherfucker getting cut, stabbed, getting out of there. Mm -hmm. DFY changed that dynamics of green. Anybody could attest to that, right? Because we came through when they when Bataki and Giuliani came in, they closed um DFYs down for anyone that was 18 or older, or if you were 16 or older, had super violent crimes. They were shipping you straight to docks. Mm -hmm. They were changing the laws. Giuliani and Pataki, they changed the laws. Mm -hmm. So when they changed the laws for the youth, for the youth, for the young guys, we got shipped to the docks in bulk. So we was leaving by 200, yeah. 300. So now yeah. coming to a place like Green, you can't just single one person out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They wasn't well, letting you. It, it was no. It was no landing ground for a black mm. person at them. So now they dumping us 60, 70. Mm. They just couldn't single dudes out, and then we not coming from Ragged Island where DFY, the blood shit, the gang shit didn't even exist. You had to. It was in DFY. We had to fight. You know what I'm saying that that we wasn't we didn't respect the razor shit back then. Not saying that dudes it's just that where we was at, we looked at that like you gotta pick up some stab you you pussy nigga. We won the scrap, nigga. They put you in a room, let you fight all motherfucking day till you ain't got no more energy. They'll let you do that. If you pick up a pen or weapon or something, they gonna fuck you up. They had the police like the we call it police, but they were stabbed. The stab tell you, you pick up let me catch you with a weapon here. We gonna we gonna fuck we gonna take it upon ourselves to fuck you up. You ain't gotta worry about having no problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the 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 mentality in the DFY, they let, you they let you fight. They let you fight. They put you in a room and let you fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, they just wasn't with that weapon shit. Um, when you got into um, prison, it's a whole nother ball game. You know, um, the fact that um, there's, it's, 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 it's a different kind of freedom when you get to the adults, where it's, it's really no one really to jury. It's really one, no one to watch over you. They just watching the security element. So the main thing is just making sure they don't get hurt and no one escape. You getting hurt and other motherfuckers getting hurt. That's we'll deal with that's that later. In the realm of yeah. you know what yeah, I'm saying. That's so that's yeah, that's 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 you know, kid custody and control. You know what I'm saying. So it's all they, it's all about you know, making sure nobody. Getting away and they not getting hurt and we had y'all you know y'all y'all the last on the totem pole however that go that go that shit is really like a show for them it be so boring for them they come to work for action so they be rumped up and ready for shit to go down you know what I'm saying and then it ain't a lot of things going on in, outside in their life you know what I'm saying when you you gotta think about it when we get up in the mountains these people don't it's not like they going out got shit to do in the daytime ah 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 you know they life is based around their job their job. And um, they take it personal, man. They take it real personal, and they kill you, straight up and down. The guards, yeah, they will kill you. Yeah, I heard. Now they will kill you. They ain't, they will kill you straight up. There ain't no game. You ain't playing it. And and, and for anybody who said they run prison, police run prison. Nobody don't run no prisons. None of that shit. They do that. I don't give a fuck who you is. I'm telling you, person that grew up in that shit. Police run prison. COs run the prisons. And the only way you could run a prison is if you snitching. If you run work with the police. Whatever they call it, snitching shit, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Unless you working with them, then you could run it. Ah, there's no way you could run prison. There's no, there's no such thing as that. This is a wild fucking life from 14. Word. Bro, I was going to mention the, uh, the Exonerated Five, but you already did. Yeah, me and Ray actually... You know, um, stay good friends. Um, I'm not familiar with like Corey because he was like in a different setting when we first grew up. But mm -hmm. um, that was the oldest one. Yeah, but um, Antoine and them, they we all came from like the same background. We just wasn't as familiar. But Raymond was like a, he was in my life. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. Um, I could play ball, like I told you. So like they was they was intrigued by that, like me being shorty, really having skills, really could play ball and all that shit. And then, you know, the fact that the severity of my crime, because I went to Goshen Secure Center. So it's like all the guys that was young that had crimes of real high, big magnitude went into this facility. So due to the fact that, you know, people knew what my charge was, 
the individual like Ray was like really mindful because I guess because of his own experience. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not knowing back then and really understanding what was going on. You know, um, even me being in my situation and being innocent, the crazy part was, you know, learning about them guys having the Central Park case, you still looked at them funny. And now I wonder right, how people, you know, it's a bug that thing because I'm saying to myself, damn, you know, because of rape. Mm. You know, mm. no matter what, no matter what, who you are, what you, you could kill a person, but if a person rape a person, mm. we look at that where we from it, like that's the yeah. ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and the tree jumping yeah. shit. Tree yeah, jumping yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, tree you know, shit. oh yeah, tree jumping, child molestation yeah. shit. Yeah. Anything that got anything to do with rape, we, we, we look at, you know, um, so sexual crimes and shit. So, you know, but after getting to learn him, um, I didn't even think of how you, how you would wonder how you are perceived with what's on your jacket mm-hmm. or what's alleged to be on your jacket, mm-hmm. right? Bro, think about this. You 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 are a celebrity, and you still sometimes feel like people looking at you a certain way. You got more money than most people in the world. They still look at you like a certain way. So imagine how he feel coming home with. A stamp on you. I can't. You. See, I run around thinking I'm paranoid until I hear all of this shit. Yeah. Like, this is a different level of, of paranoia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. They they was locked up before you or you got locked up before them? They was locked up before me. Got you. So they, they was already there. Ray was Ray um already had got convicted in his case when I met him. He was already he, I was I, in high so, school. So he had to I got locked up in ninety one. I think their case was in eighty nine. If I'm not mistaken, mm. okay. so by '90 they went upstate, and um, I was like right behind them. So he had to have like a year to win when I met him. But and, and they was innocent. So you explain your innocence. So he kind of took to you a little bit. Um, no, not even explaining my innocence at the time. Um, they all knew my crime, and I was just blaming. Like you know, I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. Due to the fact that they was crime, they was charged with the crime they was charged with. It's that's an uncomfortable conversation with them. You you not really going to talk to them about the rape shit because it's like the rape shit under yeah, that. Yeah. So a person will ask you about murder before they ask you about rape. And mm-hmm. you get what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. But dudes would talk about it like, nah, they ain't really do that shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? But it still was there. Is what I'm trying to say. So so when they was locked up, niggas. Knew they ain't do that shit. Yeah. Or that was the overall yeah, consensus nah, niggas that knew, they ain't yeah, do it. Yeah, niggas knew they ain't do that shit. Oh, that's crazy. Niggas knew they ain't do that shit. Yo, that's well, yeah. Up, when I met Ray and them, you know, that was the word already. Like, nah, they ain't do that shit. Niggas got set up sign. Like, you know, word yeah, yeah, travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, people knew I ain't do what I did. The like, whole, it was, like, yeah, in the prison. Even in my community, people knew I ain't do it. And then there, they knew, the, they knew the system was crooked way before I did. And some of them niggas know. already be knowing the law and knowing that your shit ain't make sense. And if mm-hmm. you had a decent attorney, you could have beat this and that, that, that. Like, my little cousin I just, just think, like, on. you can't, like, in, in prison, you can't hide shit. So it's like, from the, everything travel you from the beginning. So, like, from that beginning first hit, like, it, it's going to go with you. Like, like so, I, like, from the beginning, niggas do shorty and them ain't do that shit. It, I don't know how to you get them trying to yeah, stick yeah. with you like they ain't do that like they knew it cause from the beginning we going through this shit and we really ain't you could tell of a person you get what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. yeah. so it was like yo man they, they jamming shorty and them niggas up you get what I'm trying to say and we dealing with some adult shit I'm getting charged as an adult right. so when I go to choice when I'm going through all my process I'm getting separated from all the kids kids, kids and they put me with the adults and the adults really see what's yeah. going on they, they already like you know career criminals or yeah, whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call it but these are guys that's experienced already, and they already see what's going on. Like, that's fucked up what they doing. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that shit travels, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it sticks with you. This way, same way if you did some other shit. It's more, yeah. Like, yeah, like if it's you came travel. in there for rape or did something to some child molester, that's, you can't hide. Mm-hmm. That, that shit going to come out. You're going to know what's going on. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it, all that shit come to, to fruition. So they were shooting you bell when you was a kid, or no? I never had a bell. Not bell, oh. They was, that's our shit, our slang. They was looking out for you. The old heads looked out for you. Nah, I'm gonna Not say really. That. I'm gonna, I didn't have a lot of friends because I had beef with the police. So dudes don't want to. They talk all that tough shit, but dudes don't want no problem with the gotcha. officers in there. Mm. Yeah, right, gotcha. Yeah, so gotcha, I ain't gotcha. have a lot of. That wasn't. I wasn't. I'm a not standing. I'm just say, like so. I'm just saying. I had like a couple chosen guys when I first came to Spafford. Like, 
my initiation to me being in prison was a big part of everything for me. I mean, being locked up. Because Sparford, to me, was one of the most violent places. But people don't look at that as prison. They look at that as... Sure. Little shit, but you and that shit, you had to fight for everything, every, every, everything, and everything. That shit was warfare to me. Um, so, bro, I just got locked up. Mm-hmm. I just got locked up and right because I'm, I was forty five. Mm. Them little niggas was wowing, bro. It was five, mm. six stabbings a day. Yeah, you came home and from that one day a little traumatized. Nah, I was just like, up. yo, they twenty something years old, bro. They had sixty jokers in a room, and it's understaffed. The niggas would fight. They couldn't even really separate you. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't really separate you because they was that understaffed. They was poking Nick, bro. And now on Ragged Salad, it's more so. Um, they had separated where they was basically like the separating all the gangs and the all gang that now. But now they not doing that. They they on some let's take our jails back. Fuck that. Fuck them. Too many of us getting assaulted. You know what I'm saying? And you know they mixing all the gangs, everybody up together. So now it's like you know. To me, looking at it, you know I go back into these places and speak to them and all that shit. And when I'm looking at it now, the re the reason why I'm really on the rappers and and um. I feel like it's important, especially like with the drill thing. Like I'm, I'm one of the individuals like stand straight up against the drill element, mm-hmm. and the reason why I do it because I feel like um, it's feeding the belly of the beast. Like it's the, it's one of the core elements that's what got the genocide revolving in our communities right now, um, on so many different levels. Mm-hmm. And um, we talk about it here a lot. The biggest drill rappers is on Ragged Island right now. Like these guys in there fucked up, don't got no other, but got millions of views. You get what I'm saying? Or oh, boo boo boo. And and um, like I started a record label just to stand against that shit. It ain't and, and just to just to go against some shit that I know is ain't about nothing. Um, and I feel like um, like what was going on with the drill is like, it's it's a part of um. Well, it then became a part of the system where that shit is helping feed the belly. Like, you know, we used to call it the belly of the beast. Mm-hmm. So that shit is a whole part of the mentality that's going, like, years and years of mm-hmm. genocide. Like, because with the, after Pop the Smoke, like, these little niggas, just, they, 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 they happy to live to get to a point to die. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like he made it cool to die. You know what I'm saying? Even as long as I could get lit, I, I don't give a fuck what's for a summer, whatever the case, he made it cool to get lit to die. And that's how I look at it, and um, I feel like you know, like that's that's it's with the mass incarceration. When the, when I grew up, it was the crack academic. Now they remix this shit with it's like the pandemic or whatever that is called, but it's a whole bunch of shit going on within this pandemic because they reset the whole world. You know what I'm saying? Talk about it a lot. Um, and that's that's where I feel we at with it. And um, so I I feel like the toughest shit I could do, like I always felt like I was a tough individual. So like the toughest shit I could do is stand on merit or some shit that I know got real integrity to it, um, and push out positive positivity as far as the real message. But how do you get that message through to the young drill nigga that really don't want to hear that shit at that age? I'm into what I'm into. You old niggas, that's cool, but I'm I'm doing what I'm doing right now. The young, the young drill nigga that's just like that, he only standing on like that because of what he said earlier. He don't got nothing else. That's the tough, the toughest shit he, that's on, he only doing that because he don't got nothing else to that's stand on. That's your security on. blanket. That's a security, that, that shit is facade. The same kids that's doing some of the litters, if you check my, no, I don't want to point up, but some of the same kids that's doing that shit, right? Dudes got them, that managing them, you know what I'm saying? Having them like they be having them selling weed and shit like that, so they just go under these nigga pre because these what this is this is what's feeding the source, mm-hmm. right? I roll down these little dudes, offering them a couple of dollars. Yo, listen, man, make some different content. I'm trying to put this shit on boo boo. I'm like you boo boo boo. They don't got opportunity. They, they jump right on board. They don't give a fuck about who they align with or not. They jump right back on board. So what I'm seeing with that is that it just first it's, it's a lack of opportunity with these guys. They just want to really be heard and seen, mm-hmm. and they basically feel like. Um, I had the little dudes from my neighborhood telling me, yo, yo, we got the other music, but we got to make, because this is what's going right. This is what's going to get us lit. This is what's going to get, ah, so dude, yeah, so that's why I time. feel like 
um, that's why I created the platform of me getting behind these young artists. Because my thing is, I'm going to get you lit. Not under that pretense. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you if you if that's if you feel you only doing this shit because this is this is oh, giving it's giving this you a platform or this is the only way for you to get her eye. Now I'm gonna give you I get behind you and finance the shit and all that and this put you in a position for you to be heard. Get Benji or whoever shoot the videos mm-hmm. just to put out different content because to basically show that you, another way. Yeah, because what yeah because what's happening is with the young drill artists is that's what exactly what they seeing like. Mm-hmm. The dude from across the street got on making that. I don't see nobody else getting on from right here doing anything else right now. And that's what the label wanting you to make. Yeah, that's right. what that. But that's it's, what that's, they, they say in label, right? But I, like, so the young guys from my neighborhood, right, Kingsborough, right? They just got some type of deal or whatever the case may be. But all that label shit, the signing shit is gimmicked out. It's all for God, God. Like they getting these promotional deals. I don't really know behind this shit, whatever the case may be. But they these these young dudes are getting hundreds of thousands of views too. So. Mm-hmm. Whoever is benefiting off of these shits, right? So most of the time, by these dudes getting up to a couple million views and all that, they even dead in jail, right? But by the time they really get lit, because they gotta get, they gotta do some erratic shit for them to yeah. really boom, boom, boom. All boom got for the them. law in their right. ass, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So by the time they shit really start kicking in, whoever like benefiting off of them, like the algorithm shit or whatever that mm-hmm. shit is called, the stream app, whatever mm-hmm. that nobody seemed to understand. Mm-hmm. These 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 little niggas is jammed up, but they get fifteen grand or something. Uh that shit they they and then they on That's board. But it's all promotional. Fifteen deal. grand though That's when enough. you yeah. you know fifteen grand when your your elevator smell like piss and you could get a cute little chick, you get a little watch, little chain, fifteen grand is damn near like heaven. You know what I'm saying fifteen, I signed mine's away for ten. <laughs> you talking 20 years ago though Joe These niggas today It's 2022 They'll take 15 or 20 Okay We are back Yes we are, we are. I ain't expect to sit here And cry on a Friday night Joe <laughs> I gotta be honest with you Yeah you're a crier He, he got me a little no, teary I cry. Yeah, yeah, me too. No, I cry. Nah, you don't have no problem Nah you don't up. Nah, nah, I, ain't talking about talking. I don't up. know how you can hear shit like this I have a very vivid imagination uh-huh. And I like to think that I'm an empath I try to put myself right in the spot Word. Mm-hmm. And Can't I can't No you I can't it's just, and, it's, and it's all of this time of That I know I can't I can't imagine that yep. You use the term bidden and and for me, I hear that. Well, actually, you said that comes with acceptance, mm-hmm. acceptance of the situation, acceptance of what went on, whether I did it, whether I didn't do it, how they viewing me. What part of the bid did the acceptance really come, and how did that weigh on your mental? Well, the acceptance, the acceptance part come with the more violent you become in prison. Um, prison is a predominantly violent environment mm. so the more violent you're willing to get is the more respect you gain in prison um, and by the more erratic you're, you, you're willing to go so um, to me the more that I indulge in ignorancy um, that's that's the more acceptance the more respect willing to come like um People not gonna play with you. Um, they not gonna try you a certain way, um, and it's applauded. Ignorance is applauded in, in, in jail. It's, 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 it sound backwards, but that's what it is. It's mm-hmm. applauded. Like some of the most ignorant shit is was laughed at. Dude's gonna hi son, dude, and you know when. The more you know, when you don't look at it as ignorant, I don't. You don't look at it ignorant at that time. It's just um, the mentality is, is is like retardation. You know what I mean? We we suffering. We just ignorant. Like we don't know no better. You not you you. And then you we young kids, so you do got the stigma. You got you not really trying to listen. You got the know it all type of shit going through your mind at the same time. But under them, under the environment, it's so much pressure that, you know, um, the ignorant shit is contagious. So it rubs off, and um, it's like um, 
it becomes a battle of who's willing to do the more the most ignorant, mm-hmm. more violent shit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Contest. So we so we know how you divine timing with how you ended up being paroled, but like you said, you still come home with this label on your back. Walk me through the process of you being exonerated. Wow. Um well, I got violated on, on for parole violation um, for being arrested with a gun and a cab. Um, I went back to Ragged Silent, um, fought the case, um, was acquitted on the case. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. They pulled over the cab? They pulled over the cab. I got into a cab with another person. It was a bag in a the cab. They found a gun in the bag. That led to me being offered 20 years of life. <laughs> right? Um... For me going through what I've been through, being home roughly, um, I was home maybe eight months wow. after the 17. People don't know nothing about that. Um, and then um, I got arrested and went right back in after about 13 months because I so-called ran, but I ain't, you not running. I ain't have nothing to run with. I'm just hiding until the point where I turned myself in. Um, Got offered the 20 years of life, decided to fight the case, um, was acquitted. And I felt like with that, when I was in there, I used to pray a lot, right? But I don't believe in religion, but I believe in God. But in my mind, I used to see like the Mario Brother game. Because when I was young, I was really good at Nintendo playing Mario Brothers to the point where I could play it to, to the end and the game start going real fast. Yeah. Fast like over, over. I used to sit there and play that shit all day. And when I was when I when I went back on the violation, um, and I was fighting the case, um, I used to just pray a lot, and I used to ask God. I used to talk to him, not really pray. I used to just talk to him, close my eyes and pray. And I used to see the Mario Brother game, and you know how you go down the little pipes and shit, and then mm-hmm. you go down the wrong one. I used to, for some reason, that's only when I close my eyes, I always could see that, and I used to be like, yo. God, if you give me a chance, I'm not going to go down the wrong pipe no more. I just need a chance. Like, I didn't know. I didn't understand this shit. Like, I need a chance at this life shit. Like, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I got acquitted on that case. Um, They still send me upstate for about, like, 60 days or some shit. Because you still, when you do a violation, you still got to um go to, go to the downstate. Mm-hmm. And um, So I said in downstate. But downstate is like doing box time. Like you, you're not around nobody. You locked in all day, twenty three hours out of the day. They come out, they let you for. It. They ain't really doing phone call. They pull that shit up, but you basically like box time in there. Mm. So, to me, that was the most important time I did out of all the time I did, because it like it did something for my soul. Mm. Like um, as far as like um, like when I came out of here, I came out of here with like a different mind state this time. I know that. I wasn't allowing myself to go around certain people. Mm-hmm. I knew certain things wasn't an option. And um, my mother told me, she said, um, she said, you went in as an innocent man and you letting them turn you into the person that they claimed you to be. Mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. She said, she said, um, I'm older now, you know. I did all the stuff I could do for you when, when you was in there. I can't do it for you no more. You here now. You got to do it for yourself. Mm. My whole life changed around, man. Ain't no front into that shit. I changed my mind state. I changed my life. And life changed for me. Start, shit start happening. Hearing your story, it's real easy to see how your life mission today is what it is. Like how you speak against some of the shit that you speak against, going back to the facilities to speak, like that shit's important. I see Wallow do it, and I, when Wallow, I'm yeah. like, yes, yo, I great. champion Wallow. Thank God, but like Wallow the people, yeah, yeah, the champion Wallow. But I'm sitting there looking through my phone, saying, "Thank God for the people like y'all that's gonna go and tell the story." But you know, even though like it's guys like. Wallow, I respect the brother. I never met him personally. Mm-hmm. And but 
people look at me a certain kind of way or other individuals, but even guys like us that so called doing like some positive right shit, it's like a competition thing. It's like dude, he, dudes won't don't want to get up with other people to if we all doing some shit that's really right. That should be. It's like as black people, we, it still got the slavery stigma still on us. What we don't want to even do, and it could be bigger shit than all of this coming together do certain other shit, and um, it's still that stigma there. You know what I'm saying? And we all supposedly trying to do something constructive. You know what I'm saying? But I respect the brother Wallow. He actually is um. A motivation to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I see one of them brothers post some shit like that. I repost it because mm. it be on target. It's mm. what it is, you mm. know what I'm saying? And um, I just feel like you know, even 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 with the light of doing positivity stuff, it's still like a competition thing with individuals because everybody want to be that man. So, you know what I'm saying? And um, that that what what what, what we dealing with, you know, um. None for nothing, right? Um, going through prison taught me something, right? That no matter if, if you come, if you are Islander, like a Jamaican, or come from the West Indians, or you Caucasian or Spanish or anything, going through prison, they come through, they check for their people. Black, if you just like regular black, if we look, look what I was mm -hmm. about to say. I said, if you regular black, and ain't nothing regular about being black, mm -hmm. right? But that's just the mm -hmm. shit that we so fucked up thinking. Mm -hmm. But... The thing about it is, black person come on the gallery, who that nigga, who we are, it's a totally different feel. We not checking for nobody well-being, not willing to give a soup, a soap, wash your ass, nothing. Spanish, they, they doing that. J Jamaican brothers, doing that. Analysts, all them do that. Whether Whatever your culture is, if it's outside of you just being somewhat a, a nigga from the street, they check for their cultural background. And then I start looking at that and saying to myself, that's because, like, you know, we don't have no sense of culture. And the closest thing we got to a sense of culture is hip-hop. Hip -hop. Mm -hmm. When we speak of culture from the urban community around the way, it's hip-hop. Hip 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 and if you got the only thing we know as as a culture pushing a message of genocide, we we fucked up. We, we, we crashed that's out. That's deep, my nigga. Yeah, that's deep. That's some deep shit. Yeah, John's just speechless, man. No, nah, I never even looked. I mean, I wasn't never locked up for no long stretch of time, but uh, I've heard the stories. That's crazy. It's important to share them. Word. Yo, I dog. appreciate y'all brothers for allowing me up here, bro. Like, you know, um, I ain't no goofy nigga, ain't nothing. Yo, I, I honor the fact that you real. My, you know what I'm saying? These, like, you know, um, I've been watching you and there's... You know, like like he said, you a celebrity to me. No matter matter how much money and all that shit. Like I, you someone I grew up looking up. Boom, 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 boom. When you speak, I listen. You know what I'm saying? But it it, it got to you know and dent on my life. I you pay attention and through your life story, you have been able to put make yourself who you are. You know what I'm saying? Ain't not light about none of that shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you know I appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Being a big brother and not no phony coney shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, thank you. And in an arena of us being in a strip club, of having, you know, <laughs> some, you know, real shit. Like, yeah, um, real. somebody asked me um, the other day, like, why I like going to the strip club. I told them I grew up around nothing but stink, motherfucking smelling niggas farts, breath. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get around all day in cell. I'm forced to be in this environment. Uh -huh. You think I don't want to be around nothing but half neck and pretty women yeah, and all that, and I can throw, and I can really skin. enjoy it. I right. done been the one that went holding dudes like Tinsley down and couldn't throw no money in the club. Right. Mm. Now I could feel good about that shit. You, I don't want to do it. Right. Why? Mm -hmm. And I feel yeah. good about me. Damn, I like her. And the thing about it, crazy is, nothing for nothing. Um, I don't know how to talk to a girl outside of the club like that. Like I don't mm. like it's, it's awkward to me for me to mm. like the girl that I say if I like, and it's not like I'm trying to, you know, be funny or even handle come front with money, but yeah. I know I ain't gotta come to you explain all this different type of game shit. You know I really like you. I'm I like you. I'm do shit. I'm doing my action show. I like you because I don't know how to do all that other shit, and mm -hmm. it makes me come so the girl I really like. If I like her, I'm gonna show interest. If you know. 
if I feel like I like you. And that's super interesting, yo. That is super interesting. It's dog. Being in a strip club is one of my most comfort comfortable places because I feel No, you look comfortable that night. No, you fuck me up. Even with that, right? You learn how to talk to girls in your teenage years. Correct. You didn't never had it. Right? And then as you get older, you start getting a little bit better game. Your shit get a little sharper. Mm-hmm. You get a little better clothes. You get a nicer car. You just upgrade. That's corny to strip that from niggas. Like mm. that. No, that's what I'm saying. So you, as you growing, you getting, you might have started off with a bullshit car when you was 19. You got 25. You got a little job. You got a little bit better car. All of that progression and maturity and ascension was taken from him. Do the bartenders be familiar with the story? <laughs> um, like you know, like of of now, you know what I'm saying. I done, yeah. So after I did like the mm-hmm. certain other things, um, I could cut that shit out. Totally. Okay. Um, like for me, the face get familiar. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. with the social media, certain stuff. So like, um, they don't know until somebody tell them, and then they Google, and then. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They start falling in line like, oh, he want. You know what I'm saying? So, you know that that shit is like an ego booster too. You know what I'm saying? Because you want the people that you want the people that you like to least feel like you know, damn, they know who I am. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like when you overlooked in life all the time, you want to be recognized by the people you fantasize about. See, yo, and I'm about to say, yo, I just asked this fucking question the other day, and. Look at God, put it right in front of me. I asked, when is it okay for us to have an ego, right? Because we talk about ego with the negative mm-hmm. connotation here right, all right, the time right, and what right. it makes us do and blah, 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 right, blah, blah. Right. But in this particular instance, right, I feel like all that comes his way to boost it's ego deserving. Is, yeah. should sure. happen. Yeah. You're deserving of it. There's nothing, that shouldn't be looked at as bad, right? No. 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 Hell yeah, you fucking shitting me. I get, I get, I get, um, I get, I get, um, but people will come at me if they feel like I'm going to the strip club. Because I, for some reason, because of my life and I'm being exonerated and I'm doing something positive, now I put on a, put myself in somewhat of a box where I can't even enjoy myself being in the strip club. You get what I'm trying to say? And I feel like, huh? <laughs> Fuck. That's y'all done put me, y'all done put me where I had to eat some shit called loaf. And that loaf is not even a food. It's like some synthetic shit that they all put together. Right. It's hard as a brick. And you eat the shit when you're in the box because they basically put you on a diet when they're not giving you regular food. So you forced to eat this shit called loaf. It's like a punishment after they took all your other restrictions away. And um, I'm saying to myself, damn, they, they not judging the people that made me eat the loaf and shit like that. And I don't focus on the officer, you know what I'm saying, that was behind all of this shit like that because in the beginning stages, I didn't understand the dynamic of what what part he really played into all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? He was the lead detective, ah, da, da. but it was so many people that dropped the ball on me on so many levels from, um, it was lawyers that told me straight up, I can't represent you in this. I'm, I I won't represent, I, I can't represent you in this. I got to give you a case to somebody. I'm not going to do this to you. You know what I'm saying? The when I Before the judge actually, um, Judge Simpson actually made her ruling of recent times, it was a lady who called in that sat on my case back then in my trial. I was involved in the probation report who called in hysterical crying saying that she had information that could have proved my innocence back then. And this is recent. This is not this and this is someone that followed all the way from back. This is 27 years you later. I think, dog. She called oh, in man. to the judge, right? This is facts. My lawyers all in contact. They called me up to the fucking thing and she they told her, "Listen, someone just called in. They told my lawyer, you need to go get that in boom. The lady that's called in while we on in the hearing in court saying hysterically a, a court of a Appointed mm. person, right, right. staff saying, "Listen, I've been had inf- information that could prove his innocence. That could prove his innocence since back then." And this is my problem with that. How do you sleep? And this be my thing. Yo. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I have a problem when the cops turn to crooks to catch crooks, right? Because they'll justify it, like, "Yo, the crooks out here beating the system." They'll turn into crooks. To catch the real, like you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So in his case, how the fuck do you 
sleep at night knowing that somebody's child, my nigga, was 14 years old and went to jail for something that you could prove they didn't do, but you won't stand on the other side of that coin. In the shows that I watch and the docs that I watch. It's always one of them. Yeah, and it don't be the easiest time sleeping for them, some of them. Like, But you know what? Nigga, 14? I think that they dehumanize cases, blacks. That, in some cases, yes. they that's, that's I think they can right. justify as they think they saved some of our lives, though. Because I heard individuals say, Yo, this shit probably saved my life or something. And I say to myself, damn. If, you know, I don't want to hear that shit after I just sat up. Nah, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Not just that. You know what they no, do? I don't want to hear that. I promise you, dog. You know what they do? No. They dehumanize us. As Correct. black people. Mm-hmm. Correct. So it'll like, help you matter. sleep if you look at the blacks like an animal. Less than. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, they just project. You hear the music. You hear the this. You hear the that. Even, nigga could be them coming to court lying on you for a fucking traffic ticket. The dumbest shit in the world is how they separate they their consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's them. It's not a normal person. It's them. Fuck it. It go back to even... uh uh uh. Mad dog talking about just shut up and dribble. When they talk about sports, they look at us in a certain light. They don't necessarily humanize you. They make certain they things They sending somebody's 14-year-old kid to jail innocently. You know you got the information. Nigga, send it in anonymously. You come to get me from my mom's house during breakfast. Nigga, send it in anonymously. Even if you don't want to fucking give it to the newspaper that's anonymously. What they, that's what they arrested me on, an anonymous call, they said. That's what this shit started from. No, I'm talking about the lady. Get the shit to the media here. outlets anonymously. Like, yo, huh? I don't know where it came from. It just showed up on somebody's doorstep that this kid is 14 years but old was and letters, he got driven out. It was life. letters in my files that had all different type of stuff in it during the course of the time of me investigating my case. Like, close the case, throw away. It was shit that was in my files that wasn't supposed to be there. So a lot of people highlight the Thompson guy, like he was this hero that stood on his wrongful conviction stuff and all of that stuff. That is not true. That's to expose that. And, um, Thompson, actually, his office asked him, and his office asked me to sign a muzzle in order for them to release their files to me. The only reason... Like the whole David Rat, the whole Scarcella thing, when they, oh, they was on him, they oh, exposed him... The whole Scarcella thing got blown out of proportion because they was focusing on a wrongfully convicted individual by the name of David Ratner. He was a white guy that was convicted of killing a rabbi. And it was big. And that's what the legs, what Thompson was running on, the the wrongful conviction. They knew they fucked up with him. He's a white man. Boom, 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 boom. The reporter from New York Times, Francis Robles, she took... That shit to a whole nother level. Did our own investigation and start cracking and digging into it. I was the youngest individual he did this to. She was one of the first people that she I came to interview after she started connecting all the dots. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. Hard. This wasn't. It wasn't supposed to open up at this. You know. Got it. To, so it got to opened this, up based on them. It was a political thing mm-hmm. in the beginning, and I don't really. You know, I don't want to get into the, the conspiracy stuff. But Thompson, I had no way he got sick. I have a, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people look at him like he was this, what was, and they don't under really understand what was really going on. Like all that shit was political, and then they he opened up the can of worms that wasn't supposed to be open, straight up and down. And that's how they found out about. The, that's how you guys right. came into the picture. That's how. Because yeah. now we're gonna open that's up all the names. We're going back of, to looking at a lot everything. of other convictions, gotcha. and then boom, 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 and then with me, I was the first one to actually get Scarcella on the stand. My lawyers from. The Exoneration Initiative, Glenn Garber and Rebecca Freeman, boss man and boss lady, to dig him a new asshole, then so to say. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's Once great. that happened, everybody could fall in line because now his Fuck credibility. His credibility, Sean. Mm-hmm. What's 50, the show 50 at? For life. For life, yeah. Yo, I, really, I really feel like 50 took advantage of the time of what was going on when he dropped that movie. The show. The yeah. show. Yeah. It was just a lot going on with the wrongful convictions during that time, mm-hmm. and it made a lot of sense. With him, you know, to 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 really put that out. But it it went into the political aspect when mm-hmm. a nigga was running for DA and yeah. governor and all that shit. Like, yo, they start playing the political game with niggas' lives and my nigga, people, mm-hmm. family members, are pawns in your game, and that's crazy to me. I don't have it. I'm speechless. I don't have anything else Word. to John. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm, Do y'all have anything no, else, no, to John? No. John, you got anything for us? Um. That's, you know, thank you. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, thank you for like, sharing this. Like, for real. This has been lighter. This was everything that I imagined it would be. 
He's Joe's um, been saying, yo, this is going to you know, be great. From a person me. like myself that come out of darkness, I do want to be recognized. I do want people to know who John Bunn is. I do want my name to be stamped in you know, history because it's a part of a story that could basically affect other individuals that coming down my path. And if they know the story, it might affect them in a positive way. Even if it just comes from the power of this read, man. Read every every little thing. Don't be ashamed if you can't read. Learn to read and ask any question. Ask what that word is. Ask the definition. Don't be ashamed of that shit. I, I kept myself out of so many rooms being ashamed of me not knowing how to read, but no one ever took the time to teach me. You know, mm-hmm. you can't you can't be ashamed of something that you don't wasn't taught. You don't know. Mm-hmm. We you only could you know. So don't don't you know embrace that. You know what I mean. And um, I thank you, brothers, for being sincere. Um, if they could follow my page, the real John Bun on Instagram. Um, you know that's it. The voice for the unheard is the is the organization, non profit organization, based around literacy. And I'm just I'm just you know my highest point for me, man, just when I go in them classrooms and I talk to the kids and all that. Mm-hmm. It could be the kindergartens, the class. I do that. I you know I feel I feel grand. And I go in there and I cry. I cry every time. So, I, you know, I can't help it. You know, yeah. it's trauma for me. Yeah. My, my, course, man. I know I'm, you know, I know I'm, I know I'm hurt some kind of way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I just try to make good on whatever it is. But I ain't, I ain't, I ain't. I feel it makes me human to feel. When I stopped mm-hmm. feeling, I wasn't human no more. Mm-hmm. I ain't care about life. I ain't yep. give a fuck. I was a better mm-hmm. numb towards sure everything. For all them years, you wasn't no? really able to express that feeling. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I fucking cry every day. Right. I cry when I'm happy. Girl I was messing with bought me a ring the other day. I cried for that shit. Nobody never gave me no shit like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it probably could be the fact that I'm giving her shit or whatever the case. Oh, I'm giving to give him. But the fact that she took the time mm. out be like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to get him something. Right. I gave people tenfold that shit and they only could ask me for more. Right. Mm. They ain't give me shit back. They ain't take a piece of what they gave me and say, damn, let me go buy him a sweatsuit or a pair of sneakers. Mm-hmm. Shit, I did shit for them. Buy me a card on Christmas. They just went about, damn, he ain't do this. Mm-hmm. After everything I do for you, it's still what just I don't more. do. Right. How the fuck that work? You don't. <laughs> you don't. John, Yo, you yeah. got a spot here on this couch. Word. Anytime you happen Word. to be in the neighborhood, I'm gonna follow your page so I could check on when you at the strip club. <laughs> so I can go see my bartender at a different day. But no, one wow. one day we'll go in there and we'll we'll have a good time, man. Definitely. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you, Joe. Word. And we going, yo. Peace. Peace. Peace.